Hi, my name is Mike Dillard, and this is a Self Made Man, the podcast for those who want to leave their mark on the world and create a legacy of honor, integrity, and achievement in every aspect of your life. I'm glad you're here, and once again, it is time to forge your destiny. So today's interview is going to be pretty special for a lot of you out there who want to build an online business, but who might feel like you're just not cut out for an information marketing type of model. Now, obviously, if you follow my work in this podcast, you know that I've done very well as an online publisher and educator. I figured out about 10 years ago that I'm really quite good at writing books and courses and selling those online. And in fact, I've sold over $60 million worth of those products during that time period. Well, naturally, a lot of my students want to create the same kind of business. Well, what if you're not meant for that? What if writing and recording products is a true struggle for you? What if writing sales letters or sales video scripts is something that you've attempted to do for years, but unsuccessfully? What if you just don't want to turn on the camera and start posting pictures and videos on Instagram every week to become an influencer and leader in your niche? Well, the bottom line is that very few people are meant for this kind of business, and that's okay. So if that's you, then today's episode is what you've been looking for. The good news is that there is a very different kind of business that you can build, one that you can run from anywhere in the world where you don't have to write sales letters or fire up the camera. All you need to do is find and list great products for sale. Now, I'm talking about Amazon. There are literally tens of thousands of average ordinary people who make a phenomenal living buying products at wholesale and listing them for sale on Amazon. And that's it. Many of them, in fact, have now started to private label those products under their own brand, build up a customer base, and then sell that company for millions of dollars just one to two years later. It is one of the most simple and relatable business opportunities in the world. And the guy who helped start this revolution is on with us here today. His name is Matt Clark. He's a very good friend of mine here in Austin. And over the past seven years, Matt's company has produced more successful Amazon business owners than anyone else in the world. So if you've been trying to build an online business, but it just hasn't clicked, starting an Amazon company might just be the answer that you've been looking for. And Matt is here today to walk you through the entire process. So please help me welcome Matt Clark. Well, Matt Clark, it's a pleasure to finally have you on the show, brother. Welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, Mike. Glad to, uh, glad to be here. You bet. So for those who are listening, Matt is a good friend of mine here in Austin. We've known each other for many years and uh, have spent quite a few days shooting each other uh, with paintballs out here at the local paintball field. <laughs> so <laughs> we're over overdue for, uh, for a, a day uh, on the field, though. It's been about a year or two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Matt and I have have been in the entrepreneurial game here for many years now in two very different ways. So we've got a ton of colleagues here in Austin who are business owners, and obviously I've gone down the you know education route as kind of the the teacher expert in the different subject matters that I've pursued. And Matt has really cut his teeth in the opposite realm of e commerce and really selling on Amazon. Uh, and at this point, Matt, you've built over the last few years one of the most successful training companies in the world when it comes to helping people start Amazon based businesses. And I think at this point, your students are selling over $1 billion a year in products on Amazon. So bring us up to speed for those who are not familiar with you and your background on your story. And then we're going to dive into a really, really important topic today on how to build an Amazon based business. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, thanks a lot, Mike. So, um, yeah, I mean, it all kind of started back. I mean, I, I knew for a long time that I wanted to to build and run my own business. And uh, this was like, you know, 2007. I was getting ready a year away from graduating college. And I was like, you know what? Sounds great. I'm going to build a, you know, financial business because, you know, back then the the markets were going crazy. Seemed like a good idea. And so uh, actually, you know, kind of postponed building a business for a few years and uh, went into an investment banking job. And then after seven months, I was like, you know what, forget this. I was like, I'm out of here. I'm ready to go build my own thing now. I was just not happy working for somebody else. And it was not the path for me. So about seven months into uh, that job, I quit and uh, basically went and ended up kind of fumbling my way into building an e-commerce business. I wasn't somebody who was real big into you know online marketing or e-commerce or any of that kind of thing, was, wasn't a programmer or any of that kind of stuff. 
I was big in health and fitness. And so I ended up kind of making my way into selling some very high end health supplements that nowadays are becoming more mainstream because they're, they're a lot better quality. But I kind of ended up finding my way into that business. And so I was one of the earlier people to take those products, put them online, start selling them through my own online stores. And at the time, a lot of them were just sold in doctor's offices. So I learned a lot. You know, I scaled up my first business to a couple million dollars a year within um, basically the first two years of, of doing any sort of business. And it, it wasn't necessarily a smooth ride. You know, found my way into, you know, having a hundred thousand dollars in my American Express, didn't know how I was gonna pay because I was just spending like crazy running Google AdWords to crank sales up, but wasn't great at tracking profit or any of that kind of stuff. And so that's when I kind of transitioned into learning a lot about online marketing and copywriting and email marketing. And that's what allowed me to take that same e-commerce business. And rather than just using ads to grow sales, I started using you know, things on the back end, such as email marketing and improving the conversion rate of my website and all that sort of stuff that I kind of had to learn along the way. None of this kind of came naturally. You know, when I was building that business, I, you know, went from basically zero to 11,000 products over those first couple of years because I was doing a lot of drop shipping based stuff. And so it was, it was easy to scale the product catalog. And along the way, I had a product that was just kind of rose to the top and was was selling very well in my e-commerce store. And I didn't really know what it was. It ended up being some weight loss supplement that got really popular for a period of time. And along at the same time, I was literally at the pool in my neighborhood. And uh, I met a guy and we were talking business and that kind of thing. And I was telling him what was going on and this product was taken off. And just chance, you know, he ended up actually being a manufacturer for that kind of product. And that's how I ended up creating my own brand because I was selling everybody else's brands at the time. And this is a big distinction for me, and it still is today for all of our members and everyone else doing this business. I went from selling other people's brands to my own brands, and now my margins were three times as much. I could do more advertising. I could do more for customers. And so that was huge. And around the same time, I started figuring out that you know Amazon was beating me all day long in Google for, for rankings that I owned you know exact match domains and all that kind of stuff, if anybody is very familiar with that stuff. And uh, at the end of the day, Amazon was just dominating everybody. So I was like, well, you know, if, if you can't beat them, then join them. So I figured out how to sell on there and uh, things really took off. You know, I, I made a massive uh, impact in my business by taking the same exact product from my store, other people's brands and my own brand and putting them on Amazon and scaling up from there. And through trial and error, started figuring out how to rank products, how Amazon's algorithm works and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's basically how I started my own business. So... After you, you know, really mastered that skill set, you were doing millions of dollars a year in sales on Amazon. You started to obviously get people asking you, of, you know, hey, how are you doing this? Can you teach me how to do that? You started Amazing Selling Machine how many years ago, which has become the foremost authority from an education standpoint, teaching people how to start a business on Amazon? Yeah. So uh, back at the kind of halfway through or end of 2011, I was in a private mastermind group that, that you're very familiar with, the Mavericks. So I was in the private mastermind group and I was just going to do a, a webinar just for the benefit of the other people involved, basically showing them how I was doing what I was doing on Amazon. Then I met my business partner today and he was like, wow, he's like, you're really onto something here. He's like, I think my audience of a couple hundred thousand people interested in building businesses would love to hear about this. And so he's like, would you want to create kind of a course on this? I'm like, sure, you know, sounds good. I'd love to share this stuff, helps people out. I've never done that before. And so we partnered together at the end of 2011 and we ended up releasing the first version of the course, which back then was called Amazon Money Machine before we changed the name in, um, you know, basically Q1 of 2012. And you guys since then really only opened this up once, maybe twice a year. Is that right? Yeah. Our usual cadence for the past six years or so has, has been for the most part about twice a year. Twice a year. And... Obviously, uh, I've seen, I've been to the events that you do. I've seen the product and how much time, attention, and care you put into your customers, which I think is why you guys have so many success stories. And you're really just the authorities when it comes to this. So, what I wanted to talk to you about today is the ins and outs, the basics of what it takes to build a successful Amazon business, because there's a lot of people who listen to this show who might not be built for a guru-based type of online business like I run, right? I'm very well aware of the fact there's a lot of people out there who don't want to be on camera. They don't want to start a podcast. They don't want to learn how to master copywriting. They don't want to write an ebook or run a community site or a membership business, but they want to be financially free and they want to be an entrepreneur. So 
from what I've observed over the last few years, the single best option out there and what I would personally pursue if I had to start over is setting up a business on Amazon because it it doesn't require you to do any of those things. And on top of that, as I'm sure you'll talk about here over the last, I'd say, two years specifically, we've seen a ton of people who are going out quickly within the course of one to two years, building up sales channels and brands on Amazon and selling those businesses for five, 10, 15 million dollars, which I think is just absolutely phenomenal. So for those who might have an interest in pursuing this type of business, they're not cut out for the guru thing, take us through what it looks like from kind of start to finish if you can. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So there's um, some tactics here and there's some like very important principles. You know, a lot of people talk about selling on Amazon. They talk about FBA as it's like a business model. It's just a method of shipping really. And so there's a few important principles and then the tactics of actually getting it done. So in a nutshell, I mean, to go sell on Amazon, you just go to sellercentral.amazon.com. Now, if you're in the UK or if you're in um, you know, Germany or Japan or something like that, it's perfectly okay to sell on those local Amazon platforms. But just about anywhere else, especially if you're in the US, you want to be selling on amazon.com. So you just go to sellercentral.amazon.com. You can set up an account to sell products on Amazon, which will be separate from the account that you likely use to buy products on Amazon. You can set that account up in as little as five minutes. If you already have a legal entity, you know, an LLC or whatever you use, you can use that to get started, but you don't have to. You can sell under your personal name. It's completely up to you um, and obviously up to any sort of uh, legal or tax advice you want to go get. But either way, you can set up your account to sell on Amazon very quickly. And so that's just the basics. You're getting your account set up to sell on Amazon. Once you have that account set up, you've got a few options in there. You can sell existing products on Amazon or you can add a new product. Now, the entire model that we teach and we followed and all of our members' success stories and our own biggest successes uh, selling on Amazon have all come from is not from selling other people's brands. That's the model that I used to do. A lot of people love to talk about drop shipping and that kind of thing. And there are benefits because, you know, you can basically start with next to no capital. Uh, you can sell other people's products. It, it can, you know, you don't have a lot of operational hassle. But the problem is, is you're not building as good of an asset as if you own the entire brand and your margins are not going to be as good. So the model and the startup cost is not that high creating your own brand when you know what you're doing. So in a nutshell, you're basically going out there and you're finding products on Amazon that have good sales volume and low competition and you can create your own brand of them you know example of a product that you can create your own brand of is say for example a yoga mat you know yoga mats are fairly generic some are better quality some are lower quality but at the end of the day you can go out there and find a supplier on a site like alibaba.com you know you'll see thousands of yoga mats all different sizes, shapes, colors, quality levels. And then you can go find the one that you want based on research you've done on Amazon. And they'll actually put your own brand on it. And so creating your brand, fairly simple. You just go out there and essentially pick something that matches the market. Make sure to do a quick trademark search. Um, and that's, that's in the nutshell, more or less what you need to do. Buy the exact match domain if you can do it. And then you have your own brand. And you can pay you know, somebody on Fiverr.com or 99designs.com to create your logo. And congratulations, you know, you have your own brand at that point. Then the yoga manufacturer in this case can put your logo on the actual product and on the packaging. And now you have your own branded yoga mat that you can sell. Now, when you add that product to Amazon and people are searching for it and you do the right marketing, which we'll talk about in a second, then they find your product, they find your brand, they buy your product. And Amazon takes, you know, about 15% of the sales price and uh, you essentially keep the rest. Now you've got some product cost in there, but the rest of that is, is profit margin. You know, some of the biggest businesses on the, on the planet are physical products businesses like Apple. Uh, you know, there's a million other examples like that, but you're basically making them a difference between what you sell on Amazon, their fees, and then your product cost. And that's how you're basically able to scale this business up. Now, the cool thing is, is that it's not like you need a warehouse. You don't even need a third party fulfillment company because whenever you get inventory from your supplier, say you order, you know, 100 yoga mats from your supplier for your first order, then you can have your supplier send those units directly to Amazon to what's called fulfillment by Amazon. And then Amazon will basically take care of all the orders and shipping for you, which is how you can literally run this business from anywhere. And we have members who do it with just a laptop. You don't need a warehouse. You don't need any of that kind of stuff. The only time you'll ever really want something to be physically delivered to you is your samples. And so when you go out there 
And uh, say you find a good opportunity as a yoga mat and then you basically find some suppliers and maybe you find three different suppliers. You should order a sample from each one of them to your house or your office or wherever you are, hotel, and check out the samples. Make sure they're good quality. The biggest thing in this business that has changed is that you absolutely want the best quality possible. You know, back in the day, you know, when we first started doing this business and teaching this business, you were just finding opportunities and finding whatever supplier, creating your own and just starting to roll like that. But now you absolutely want to take just a little bit of extra time and, you know, poke around with the different suppliers, read the reviews on Amazon. Like you may find the yoga mat that everyone is upset because they're slipping or because it's too small or because, you know, who knows what reason. And so you can use that information to tailor your search for suppliers. And so you can actually have a product that meets people's needs that maybe are not being met yet. And Yoga Mat is just a simple example. There are literally thousands and thousands of other products that meet the same exact criteria of products that you can sell on Amazon, you can create your own brand of, that can have high volume and reasonable competition. And you can go create your own brand of, own that brand. And now you have this asset that's on Amazon making money for you. And, uh, you know, we have a whole system. I don't know if we want to get into that, but in terms of, you know, getting a product to launch to the top of Amazon for C- or a search and keyword rankings, because at the end of the day, think about yourself. If you buy stuff on Amazon, sometimes you may be like, you know what? I want to get the new iPhone. I want to get the new Google Pixel. I want to get these specific headphones. And you may be looking for a specific brand, but nine times out of 10, you're just looking for a solution. I'm looking for a yoga mat. I'm looking for a, uh, you know, microphone or whatever it else, a vitamin D you know, under eye cream or who knows what when you search on Amazon and you're trusting Amazon's rankings. And so it's not a matter of like, you know, I'm looking for the biggest brand out there. This is how people that, you know, basically can run this business from their laptop are able to beat big brands on Amazon and get a lot of sales. And then once you have one product doing well, you can add more products to the brand. Now you have a customer list and you're able to promote your new product to that existing customer list. And that's how you're able to scale this business to, you know, you know, we have members doing, $10 $10 million, $20 million, $30 million a year. And like Mike said, people are selling these businesses for millions and millions of dollars. They're, they're turning over pretty much like clockwork. There's a huge demand for people to buy these kind of things. So if you want to get it off the ground, there is a high possibility that you could, if you do things right, sell this business starting with literally 500 bucks, a couple thousand bucks. If you do things right, you could potentially build something that's worth a million dollars, $2 million, $3 million in 18 to 24 months. So that was one of my biggest questions. You know, success is in the details, right? Amazon is obviously the biggest e-commerce store in the world. It's the most populated. There's the most competition on it. So how do you get noticed in all of the noise? And I love the analogy that you gave, which is you're just searching for a solution because that's totally correct. When I go on Amazon, I type in what I'm looking for. I don't care who the, the seller is. I don't even look at their name. I look for two things, which is, do I get prime shipping? right? Because I'm a prime Amazon Prime member, do I get free shipping? And do they have their you know, five-star seller rating is it at least four or five stars? And that's all I need to know. Uh, you know assuming the price is competitive with all the other options that are, that are there, I, I really never look at the name of the actual vendor selling the product. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's how, that's how most people when they're searching for these kind of products. And so you know, nowadays it's it's so important that, you know, there's there's the tactic side and then there's what does Amazon want? More importantly, what does the consumer want? You know, I had a big realization uh, and it sounds funny. It seems super obvious now, but I was a couple years into business. All I cared about was generating as much sales as possible, building this business, learning everything about it. And then I had a realization. I was like, you know what? Every single product I sell, there's somebody who's literally just like me, who's like sitting there at their doorstep, picking this product up, having an experience at their house. And so, you know, it's, it's when you think like that, then you start thinking about like, what is that experience? Is this a good product? Not a good product. Is it what they expected? Not what they expected. And nowadays with any business, but especially, especially selling on Amazon, like poor quality products can't hide very long. And this is also a huge opportunity. It's not just a matter of having like the world's best ingredients or any of that kind of stuff. You know, you can go out there and find a product that, you know, maybe is already selling well, but the review rating is pretty low. These are good opportunities. If you find products that are selling well, but the review rating is low, 
then that can mean that people are still willing to put up with a inferior solution, but they really want the product. And so you can come in there, read the reviews, read especially, you know, say the three star reviews. Those are typically the most level headed. It's not somebody who's just completely pissed off and it's not somebody who's completely elated or maybe a family member or something like that who's just giving them a five star review. You read the st- three star reviews and you can find out what people like, what they don't like, maybe something that they're not, they're not clear how to use the product is typically a big issue. So you can come in there with maybe an identical product, but you have a little instruction booklet or, or you know, uh, you know, PDF that you give them that it really explains how to use the product. And then all of a sudden their experience with that product is 10 times better because you're the first person who's ever given them good instructions. So that's an example. You can also improve little things about the product. And we don't recommend you're not doing, you know, custom molds or prototype or any of that kind of stuff. You're just saying a supplier. Instead of having, you know, this little hole here, put that little hole here. Instead of square edges, do rounded edges. Or instead of, you know, two millimeters thick, make it three millimeters thick. This is just what you're finding out from reviews on Amazon. You can go out there and create a slightly better product and do very well. And so that's that's a big part. Now, in terms of beyond just having a better product, there are ways where you can go out there and rank a product better than other people. I mean, the the launch model still works very well. If you go out there and you get kind of a burst of sales, you know, from traffic sources such as Facebook, or if you've built any kind of email list, you know, you can use other social media channels, Instagram, you can go out there and get influencers. You can also use some paid traffic using Google AdWords and Facebook as well, and uh, even Amazon itself. And if you coordinate that traffic in kind of a burst and into a launch, that can help your products shoot up in rankings. And uh, if you put the other pieces in place to get reviews and you have a good conversion rate, that product can actually stick there. And that's how you quickly build a business that keeps producing sales and doesn't just kind of like spike up and then spike back down. Now, when it comes to, you know, potentially selling the business that you build here over the first couple of years, I know there's a whole ecosystem of private equity companies who do nothing but specialize in buying and selling Amazon companies, (laughs) Um, which has been amazing. What kind of multiple does an Amazon based business uh, go for these days? Yeah, you know, we've got um, a relationship with a broker. And I was just talking with a guy the other day who's had a very successful career in, uh, you know, in, in physical products, actually. And they've raised all kinds of money. He just wants to buy FBA businesses. They kind of want to roll these up into a bigger company. And that, and so, that's yeah. real quick. FBA is fulfilled by Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Businesses that are uh, using Amazon's fulfillment channel rather than kind of selling on their own website and that kind of thing. But yeah, so uh, yeah, so multiples, what we're typically seeing is on the low side, like three times, you know, profit on the high side, five to maybe six times, uh, you know, earnings, depending on how technical we want to get. So a, a good kind of rule of thumb here is that, you know, say, for example, the business is doing a million dollars in revenue. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we'll see a typical kind of profit margin after everything's said and done of about 25%. Uh, That includes Amazon's fees, product costs, shipping costs, advertising, any kind of minimal staff that's needed. And so 25%. And if you're getting somewhere between a 3 and 5x multiple, so you get a 4x multiple. And so that's four times the 250 grand. So you're back at a million dollars. So your business is roughly worth, assuming you have reasonable profit margins and everything else is in line, your business is is typically worth around what you're producing in revenue for this case. So if you're doing a million dollars a year, you've got basically a million dollar asset couple million dollars a year or two million dollar asset and so forth. Yeah, that makes sense. So like, like you said, if you're making 250 grand a month in profit, you could sell it for roughly a million bucks and compress four years, essentially of earnings and work into a day. And then, you know, do round two if you want and, and go to the next stage and, and pursue a bigger market, bigger product line, bigger niche, whatever, whatever it is that you'd like. Now, do you get any customer data when you sell a product th- through Amazon, like if I'm if I'm selling products and you buy from me, do I get your email address, your name, and that kind of information? Yeah. So you know, um, the the way that works is you know whenever you're selling a product on Amazon, even if you're using Amazon's own fulfillment channels and everything, that you basically get nowadays the uh, full name and shipping address, and uh, you get their full name and shipping address. And so you know, building your own brand, like we all, you know. We, we like selling on Amazon, but then the day we're building our own business for ourselves, not for Amazon's sake. And so when with that said, you know, you get their name and shipping address, which is great. And so you have that kind of physical mailing database. But we definitely try to make part of this to go get them on your own real email email list, because with Amazon, you can actually send emails through Amazon's system. 
And there's autoresponder tools that you can use that can send, you know, A, did you get your order? And, you know, pot potentially ask for reviews and that kind of thing through Amazon's own email system. But as you can imagine, they, they control that channel pretty well. So you have to follow a lot of rules and what you can say and can't say. And you can't just be overly promotional like if it's your own email list. And so what we typically recommend is that you include things like package inserts. And so somebody buys your product, you include something like, hey, you know, go here and get this uh, special user guide, or maybe you offer some sort of warranty, or maybe you also offer them like a free product or a free video or something like that, that encourages the people that buy your product that Amazon ships out. When they open your product, they see a little card, for example, business card or postcard, they go to your website and they enter their email address. And so that's a, a very typical thing. And there's other, other things you can do with appending the name and shipping address and getting their phone number and, and real email address. There's email append services out there that'll, that'll do that kind of thing for you. And, and we have a lot of people that use those. But yeah, so it's a matter of, you know, trying to get those people on your email list outside of Amazon, because with Amazon, you're, you're pretty much stuck with a physical mailing address unless you do something else. Got it. Got it. So take us through a typical entrepreneur's journey when it comes to this. You've got a new group of students who are going to go through your process. What does that look like from an expectations standpoint? You're asking, so if a, if a new student is basically starting fresh, maybe they're working a nine to five job or they have an unrelated business, like what is their experience when they start start this business or start with us? So, well, start, they, they take your training. I think starting this kind of business on your own would be, would be really dumb, <laughs> frankly. <You're, laughs> yeah. As people know, you're going to pay your stupid tax one way or another. You're going to either pay it in the form of mistakes, time and money lost. Or you're going to pay it in the form of pain for the kind of education they can get through your company, right? Which I think is the, the much smarter move. So let's say someone starts as one of your students tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What should they expect? Yep, absolutely. So, you know, we, um, you know, we basically have been at this, you know, like we've kind of been talking about for, for six plus years. You know, we've helped a lot of people. So we've worked out a lot of kinks, you know, when it comes to building this business. And so with us, you know, we've outlined a full training program that walks them through every single step of basically how do I get my account set up? You know, because it is simple, but you can run into a lot of roadblocks. Do I need a separate email? Do I need a separate credit card? What if I'm from outside the US? What if I want to sell cross border? Um, there's a lot of nuances when it comes to getting your account set up and we show you how to do all that. We can help you with doing all that. So that's typically the first piece is getting your account set up. The next piece is really going into product research. How do I choose out of the millions of products available on Amazon, what product I should start with? And there is a science to this and we have a methodology and we walk you through exactly how you sort through all the millions of products as quickly as possible to build your list of, say, 15 to 20 unique opportunities that you found that have good sales volume but low competition and can fit this business model. They can be essentially private labeled. You can create your own brand of and scale from there. So you kind of boil that down into 15 to 20 opportunities is our recommendation. Then you go out there and, uh, you know, you start contacting a few suppliers and you figure out what is this product roughly going to cost me to to get, you know, because, you know, the sales price and, you know, their estimated sales volume, but you don't know the cost of the product yet. So you get that information for most of those opportunities. Then you kind of keep paring down the list into maybe three or four. And then now you have a really good picture of uh, the potential profit, the level of competition of these different opportunities. Then ideally you're picking one that out of all this list, this is the one that if everything goes well, I'm gonna roll with this one. And then when you get that one, then you order, You know, we recommend three to four samples from different suppliers for that one opportunity. And then you're kind of evaluating those based on quality. Do they meet or solve some of the problems that people are talking about with existing solutions, you know, uh, via their Amazon reviews? And so you're ordering those samples. You're evaluating those samples. You're also evaluating the suppliers. Do they communicate fast? Are their margins good? Are they helpful? And uh, once you get all that figured out, then uh, you kind of pick the best supplier. So you've got your opportunity. You've got the best supplier. And now it's a matter of placing your first inventory order. Now, we recommend most people start with at least a couple hundred units of inventory, and that could be depending on the price of the product. I and mean, you can start with as little as $500 in inventory. Most people, the kind of average is probably more around two grand, $2,500 in inventory, and that includes packaging and shipping and everything else that goes into the actual product. And so you'll, you'll order that inventory, and then usually it's 30% down and then 70% when the product's ready. And so you order the inventory, the supplier is doing their thing, they're, they're creating the inventory, Either before or after that, you would have chosen your brand name, gotten a logo created, which can be very inexpensive, as little as free to $5 to up to a couple hundred dollars if you want a nicer logo. 
and uh, supplier will need that to finish producing your, your inventory because it'll likely have your logo on there. And if you need to have any packaging design done, usually the supplier will take care of that. You could just say, I want these words here based on the example they sent you. I want my logo here. Or worst case, you can always get a designer on you know, Fiverr or 99designs or Upwork for as little as you know, 50 bucks or so to, to finish your packaging design. And that's pretty much all the supplier needs to prepare your inventory. Then at that point, most people, if, if you want to make this business work as fast as possible, then we recommend going ahead and, and starting to prepare your keyword research, your product listing copy, you know, your title, your bullet points, your description. And we walk you through all that stuff so you get the most amount of traffic from Amazon and the highest conversion rate. And so you prepare your listing, you're likely setting up some social media profiles, like a Facebook page for your brand, maybe an Instagram account for your brand, Twitter account, you know, those are kind of optional. The main one is typically Facebook. And so you create all those. A website at this point is optional. You can create one, a free one, or you can use a template out there like Wix.com or something. And just to, so you have some sort of brand presence, but it's not really a big focus at this point. And so you get those kind of assets ready. And then um, within, you know, say 30 days or so, your, your inventory is likely shipping. Now, if you're ordering a product that's light and small or sourced in the U.S., your shipping may take as little as, you know, less than a week, five to seven days. If you're ordering a product that's heavier or bulkier, which we kind of try to steer people away from at first, it still works fine for the business model. It just slows things down, uh, down a bit because they maybe have to be shipped by sea from China. And, uh, you know, we give you recommendations uh, for freight forwarders that can take care of all the shipping, the customs, all that stuff. You literally just say, hey, my manufacturer said my product's ready to ship. Can you get it from there to Amazon? And they'll be like, yep, no problem. We've done this a million times and their fees are very, very reasonable. And so they'll take care of getting it on the boat and all that sort of stuff all the way over to the U.S. And that shipping process can take, you know, five weeks typically from China, which is why a lot of times we like to try to steer people to products that can be shipped by air or, or in some cases sourced from the U.S. Because they can get live in as little as five to seven days once they're ready. And then once your product's ready and live, then you go and create your Amazon listing. And so this means you have your own dedicated piece of Amazon real estate. Essentially, you have your own Amazon page for your product. And then you add, you know, things like your title and your bullet points and description that you should have all by this point. And we walk you through all that stuff. And then uh, you want to get some nice product photos done. So we have recommendations. You know, they can be as little as, you know, really, really, really good product photos, as little as 50 bucks a photo. There are cheaper options, but product photos are pretty important. And so, you know, maybe you spend a couple hundred bucks getting your product photos done and now you have a really nice listing with images and, and photos and description and all that sort of stuff. Then you want to get a handful of reviews. These can be friends and family. These can be you just running a little Facebook ad and saying, hey, I'll give you a discount on this product. I want to get some reviews. You know, there's a lot of different ways and we, we give you the different options to get your first initial, you know, five to ten reviews. Once you have that in place, you've got a good listing, five to ten reviews. Now it's a matter of going out there and doing this launch process. So we have a very step-by-step -step system for launching your product that will help you rank for your target keywords very quickly and start getting your sales going on an ongoing basis. And then we have a lot of different other tools and processes we show you to get sales from Amazon using uh, their, their own internal advertising platforms getting sales from outside of Amazon. And then once you get that product cranking along, then we also walk you through when is the right time to add another product to your brand. Most people do it too soon, but uh, we walk you through all that. And so you start adding more products to your brand and you just scale up from there. You can either keep generating more sales of your existing product or products, or you can keep adding more products to your brand. And we typically recommend, if at all possible, you stay very focused. Start with one product, get that product selling well. Maybe add one more product, get that product selling well also, all within the same brand. If you start jumping around to different brands and that kind of thing, it can, it can sort of spread you too thin. And so once you do that, build up a nice solid brand. At that point, it's really up to you. Do you want to keep scaling this brand? Do you want to start looking at potentially selling it? At that point, it really becomes, you know, what what is your goal with this business? How excited are people when they make their first sale? Yeah, you know, even today, it's still surprising because we've been at this so long, you know, we've seen it all and all that kind of thing. And we hear people that are selling for crazy numbers and, and, uh, you know, having life changing events with these businesses in just a few years. But then, you know, we just got back from a live event, we had a couple thousand of our members over there in Orlando. And uh, it, it is amazing exactly what you're saying. It's funny you ask that because the people coming up, and, you know, a lady that was, uh, she was an artist, but she felt like there was this other side of her. She kind of wanted to build a business, but she had never done that before. She was so elated, you know, that she had just made her first sale, that she had got a product live. She had successfully sourced a product. It was a huge confidence builder for her. So, yeah, people are so excited, especially when they make their first, like, quote unquote, organic sale. 
Because, you know, sometimes they're getting a few from friends and family, but as soon as they get one from a name they don't recognize, you know, they're celebrating and jumping up and down and everything. Oh, my God. It's it's like making a million bucks. I could only imagine. Yeah. I mean, I remember how excited I was when I sold my first ebook, you know, 12, 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's just nothing like it where you're like, holy smokes, I did it and it worked. <laughs> and yeah. um, that's just got to be awesome. So I love this business because anyone can do it. You know, when it comes to the type of businesses that I've built, there is some kind of art and talent to it when it comes to either being on camera or writing sales copy. You know, it took me almost two years, 18 months to learn how to write a sales letter, right? And some people are just not going to get it. There's many skills out there like Facebook advertising or analytics or whatever that no matter how much I did it, I'm just not going to get it because my brain's not wired for that. And I just love the fact that anyone can do this because you guys have just templatized it. And it is not a matter of skill as much as it is a matter of following through a system. You know, I'm looking forward to uh, my son Chase, you know, hitting his early teens years, maybe 12, 13, 14. You know, when and if he ever wants to start his own little first business, this is exactly where I'm going to send him. It's to sell his first uh, product on Amazon. Again, because... You can be 13 years old and do this. You can be 65 years old and you can do this. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of committing to the process and following through and doing the work. Now, you know, you kind of briefly mentioned it a minute ago when we talked about getting your products to the top of the listings. Obviously, again, Amazon's a crowded marketplace. Is there too much competition these days? Is this is it reasonable to you know, expect to see some success at this? Or are you going up just against a ton of much more established uh, businesses on the platform? Yeah, absolutely. Good question. You know, we get that we get that kind of same question all the time. People are like, well, you know, there, there's so many people selling on Amazon. And like, you know, we've been very successful as a organization helping people get started to sell on Amazon. So we're adding more sellers to the market. Like, is there is there too much competition now? Is this still an opportunity or have I kind of missed it? You know, the way that we look at that is, is if you look at Amazon's annual revenue growth, which you can literally just Google that, you can see it year by year right in front of your face. And you'll you'll notice something very interesting. They're producing in a dollar and a dollar margin. They're producing more and more sales each year. And they're also increasing on a percentage basis. They're basically going into this sort of a hockey stick right now. Uh, you know, last year they added over 40 billion dollars in revenue. You know, the year before in 2016, they did about 136 billion in revenue. Last year, they did about 177 billion dollars in revenue. And we kind of chart this and predict this. And last year, very beginning of the year, we predicted they do about 170 and they did about 177. This year, uh, I think they'll do easily over 220 billion dollars. In the next three to five years, they'll be selling three to 500 billion dollars per year. Their growth is absolutely insane. And the number of sellers, there's a lot of sellers. You know, there's, uh, according to Amazon, uh, you know, anywhere from a million to two million sellers. Most of these people are people that like had an old book they wanted to sell on Amazon. Most of them are not really doing this as a business, but there are a lot of sellers. But the sales volume is growing disproportionately to the number of sellers. You know, back when I first started, you know, I had products that were ranking in the top 100 of the health category. And I'd be lucky if those products were doing a couple hundred grand a month total for one of those opportunities in the top 100. I was looking literally about four days ago and I was looking at a product that was about, you know, 17, 1800 in that same category. It's doing $200,000 a month in revenue. It's ranked nearly 2000. And when the products I used to have, they were doing that sales volume, you're ranked in the top 100, which just shows you that the sales volume has increased so much. You know, when we first started teaching this stuff, we would recommend people, hey, stick to the top 100. That's where all the money is. Now we're like, you know, top 5,000 is good. Top 10,000 wow. is good. Yeah, yeah the yeah. number of opportunities that can make you serious money and, and honestly build a, a million dollar, $2 million, $3 million business have just grown massively because the sales volume has grown so much on Amazon. Now, what about the listeners who don't live in the US? Is this something people, you know, in Australia, Canada, Europe can pursue as well? Yeah, you know, I think that's what um what's been pretty amazing for us is you know we have we have members from over a hundred different countries. We have a lot of members from you know U.S. obviously, but we have a lot of members from Canada, from the United Kingdom, from Australia, from New Zealand. I mean, Amazon has just gotten into Australia, but we've had members from there selling in the U.S. for years now that are doing extremely well. 
they don't live in the U.S. Some of them have never even visited the U.S., yet they're selling products that are sourced from the U.S. or sourced from China and are being sold directly in the U.S. Now, you can basically do this business from pretty much anywhere on the planet. We have very successful members from literally anywhere you can imagine, everywhere from China to Panama to Brazil to any country I could rattle off here. And uh, you, know, you can really do this business from anywhere. And the setup process is basically the same. And the whole business is basically the same. The only thing that gets a little bit different is first off, deciding what platform to sell in. So if you're in the US, we recommend you sell in Amazon.com. There's no reason to add the complexity of selling in another platform outside the US when you're just getting started. There's opportunities later to do that. But when you're just getting started, sell in the US. If you're in Canada, we likely recommend you sell in the US. There is not There is a Canadian Amazon platform, but the sales volume just isn't enough to justify doing it. So we recommend you sell in the US. If you're in the United Kingdom, we recommend selling on Amazon.co.uk because it does you know, 10 to $20 billion a year in revenue. And uh, it's a massive platform, great opportunities. There's a little bit less sales volume than the US, but there's also less competition. And so it's a great platform. Same thing for Germany. Amazon Germany is, I believe, still its second biggest platform, which is kind of surprising. You just wouldn't think that. It seems kind of random, but it's a massive force inside of Germany. So that's a great platform if you live in Germany or a family that live there. Same thing for Japan. Japan is another massive one. So US, UK, Japan, and Germany are Amazon's massive platforms. If you live pretty much anywhere else, you want to sell wherever is easiest for you. And so if that means it's easier for you to sell in the US, do it there. If you live in you know, say maybe France or something like that, and it's just easier for you to sell in the UK or Germany than it is in the US, then sell over there, no problem. But most cases, people are going to prioritize the US because that's still where uh, the vast majority of the sales volume comes from. But either way, you know, you can get set up to sell in these countries very easily. We have, you know, members from all over the place. We've had to deal with how do you get somebody to set up to sell in, in the US if they live in, you know, who knows what country we've been dealing with this for years. And so you can do it no matter where you're at. And like I said, you don't, it's not like you're having to you know, manage inventory or manage a warehouse or do any of that kind of stuff. You can pretty much run this entire thing with a laptop. The only time you ever want to have anything shipped to you is just your few samples. And so you pay your 50 bucks per sample, have them sent from China or from the US to your apartment or you know, house, you know, wherever you happen to live, anywhere in the world. Everything else, you never touch the inventory. It all can basically be run completely remote, which is how people can do this business from anywhere and um, has opened up a lot of opportunities which is cool for us because it's you know changed a lot of lives and people and a lot of you know countries out there they don't have as many opportunities like Romania we have a big member base and it's it's helped them out a lot because they can basically tap into the entire global economy without ever leaving their country so that's cool because that's a you know a question that comes up all the time from from students of mine is hey can I do this if I live here you know XYZ so that's perfect that they've got all of that infrastructure already built and the opportunities basically wide open globally so Matt, if people want to pursue this, if they want to learn more about building an Amazon business and specifically if they want to learn how to do it with you guys, where should they go? Yeah. So you can just go to amazingsellingsystem.com. That's amazing. And then sellingsystem.com. We've got a great free training video series, uh, walks you through a lot of this business. We've got a lot of free bonuses and downloads. Uh, we've also got a software tool that we're giving away for free that shows you a lot of great products, helps you find product opportunities faster. A lot of great stuff over there. So uh, you can check all that out. You can engage with us. You can ask questions. We are absolutely there to help you. And you can learn a lot of the nuts and bolts of this business. So yeah, AmazingSellingSystem.com. Awesome. Awesome. So guys, if you've been struggling when it comes to pursuing a business, if you've kind of been floundering, you're not sure what kind of business to build, if you've been struggling with the information leadership type of business models that are out there that you've seen me you know, build over the last few years... This is something I would highly recommend that you look into. Uh, again, this doesn't require you to have some magic skill set that you need to work on for two to three years. This is essentially a blueprint. It's kind of like building a model. You know, when you were a kid, you get the instruction set, you put the pieces together, and voila, you have the end result when you're through with that process. So I cannot recommend Matt's system enough. I've watched these guys and I've known them for 10 years. They're the absolute best when it comes to this. And uh, so if this is something you want to learn more about, go check it out at AmazingSellingSystem.com. So Matt, thank you so much for joining us, brother. We got to go uh, hang out again here in Austin. It's been too long. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time today to, to kind of share this opportunity with our, our audience. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Mike. And uh, thanks everyone for listening. Absolutely, brother. 
Well, guys, thanks again, as always, for listening. Go to selfmademan.com. If you're not listening to this episode there, go to the podcast section, click on this episode and leave your comments or hit me up on Instagram. Let me know what you thought about this episode and uh, what you learned and what you appreciated most. And we'll see you next week. Take care.